The insect world has been the source of inspiration for some well-known science fiction movies. Are these movies way off with their depiction of insects, or do they get some of the science, the entomology, correct? Maybe sci-fi movies can even teach us something about insects. This is part two of how insects feature in or are the inspiration for science fiction movies. In part one we looked at the Alien franchise and I've linked that in the description for those that have missed it. So let's get on with it. The graphic artist Ryan Church has always had an interest in insects and it has inspired some of his movie design work. His career includes involvement with movies such as Star Wars, Star Trek, Avatar, War of the Worlds and John Carter. In 2018, he gave a speech at a joint meeting of the Entomological Societies of America and Canada. An image that he showed during his presentation illustrated how the wings of the airships in the movie John Carter were inspired by the wings of dragonflies. Those airships were pretty cool, weren't they? A dragonfly makes a great model for a fictional flying machine. If you've ever watched one flying, you can see that dragonflies are very strong flyers. Dragonflies have been on Earth for hundreds of millions of years, and they were among the first insects to fly. Dragonflies were also the inspiration for the ornithopters in the movie Dune. The director, Denis Villeneuve, said about the design, Trying to get closer to the idea of an insect instead of a bird. We were getting closer to a dragonfly cross-mix with a helicopter. Personally, when I look at the ornithopters of Dune, I can't help but think of locusts rather than dragonflies. What do you reckon? Let me know in the comments. There are a number of science fiction movies that have featured giant insects, especially the sci-fi movies of the 1950s. The classic is the 1954 movie Them. I published a video previously on this subject and it's linked in the description. If you like this video so far, why not give it a thumbs up? Thanks. Now for a couple of science fiction horror movies. Firstly, The Fly, the 1986 version that is. Remember the story? Scientist, in this case played by Jeff Goldblum, invents a teleport machine and eventually tests it out on himself. Unfortunately, a fly enters the machine with him and the teleporter combines them into one creature. And sometime later, Jeff morphs into a human-sized fly. Did we learn anything about flies in this movie? Yep, how they feed. Who can forget this scene? Flies mostly have sponging mouthparts, so their food must be liquid. If a fly lands on solid food, it regurgitates a drop of digestive enzymes and then sponges up the liquid. Oh. That's disgusting. Yeah, we know, Jeff. The other sci-fi horror movie I want to mention is Mimic from 1997. It's basically a story of pest control gone wrong. It goes something like this. To control cockroaches in New York City, an entomologist genetically engineered a hybrid insect to use against the cockroaches. They recombined termite and praying mantid DNA to create the hybrid insect. These hybrids released an enzyme which accelerated the metabolism of the cockroaches. Basically the cockroaches burned more calories than they could take on board and so starved to death. Of course, being a movie, it doesn't all go to plan. But enough of the spoilers. The interesting thing here is that cockroaches praying mantids and termites are all related to one another. So the entomology isn't that far out in this movie. Despite being different in appearance and behaviours, they share a common ancestor in the superorder Dictyoptera. Dictyoptera means network wings, which refers to the network of veins in the wings of insects in this superorder. The first Dictyopteran appeared about 310 million years ago, and then our three insects, cockroaches, termites and mantids, evolved sometime after that. Back to the movies. I'd like to briefly mention a movie that is not science fiction, 
but instead is an animated dark fantasy horror movie, Coraline. This movie was recommended to me by a subscriber to the channel. I won't go into the plot too much, but Coraline uses insects in unique ways. Cockroaches and beetles form some of the furniture in the home of one of the characters. And the mantid contraption in the garden is just amazing. It's a very creative movie. If you've got this far in the video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks. Now to the movie that I think is bug central. Starship Troopers from 1997. The director of the film, Paul Verhoeven, wanted the aliens to be large insects. The aliens are communal creatures made up of various castes, which is somewhat similar to ants, bees and termites. Interestingly, the most numerous of the bugs, the warrior bugs, are the least insect-like and are known as arachnids. On the other hand, the huge tanker bugs are obviously giant beetles. Then there are the plasma bugs. These are huge beetle-like creatures. In fact, they are the alien colony's ultimate weapon. Plasma bugs produce an explosive liquid via an internal catalytic reaction that is fired from their rear ends and is capable of knocking huge starships out of orbit. Could there be a parallel in the real insect world, perhaps? Yep. Bombardier beetles. They are not particularly common insects, but they occur in most regions of the world. The one I'm familiar with, of course, is the Australian bombardier beetle. When disturbed, this beetle combines two acidic chemicals, hydroquinone and hydrogen peroxide. In a special abdominal chamber, it then adds an enzyme, which causes a reaction. This brings some of the liquids to boiling point and releases gases, which builds pressure within the abdominal chamber. The pressure blasts the remaining boiling liquids through specialized openings in the abdomen tip with an audible All this alchemy is a defense mechanism against predators. If the sound of the explosion doesn't deter a predator, having scalding liquids blasted into its face will. Of course, bombardier beetles are tiny compared to plasma bugs. I mean, the Aussie one is about 15 millimeters long. So they're not going to be blasting starships out of orbit anytime soon. As I mentioned, all the bugs in Starship Troopers belong to a caste system. All the different types of bugs are controlled by the brain bug, which appears to be based on a queen termite. There's one caste I almost forgot to mention, the hopper bugs. Here's one here. They are similar to warrior bugs, but with wings. Insects here on Earth have had wings for about 350 million years. And if you'd like to learn some more about the evolution of insect wings, check this video out up here. And thanks for watching.